Gemini of Funk Butter. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And thank you for joining me on Helter Shelter. As this eye-opening curtain pullback is filled with potent ridicule and rants against societal housing myths and injustices. Welcome to Clonesville. I mean, Red Roof Village. Face it, we've all been on the receiving end of various flavors of bullshit our entire lives. But good grief, this eternal delusion known as the American dream ought never trump common sense. For generations, young folks were a captive market for starter homes as the natural progression of young adulthood and starting careers and families ensued. Now, there are more young adults living with their parents than did during the Great Depression. Realizing that playing by the rules in this system impeded their happiness, many have determined that the best cure for this disease was to deprive it of nourishment. Here are 22 of their adaptative methods. With the thinking that he'll either win or learn, but never lose, Zeb's ultra-kind friend, Hugh Manatee, found a small sectioned-off industrial unit for 85 cents per square foot. Since it was industrial property, the units had showers. His rent was $408 a month. Wow! Zeb's close comrade in sports, Gymnasium, scored a stellar living arrangement at a seldom-used airport. The monthly hangar fee was only $275. He had a key to the restrooms, however, there was no shower. Fortunately, a Cardinal Fitness Center was less than a mile away, for which Jim spent $12 per month. Finding small office space in a great area of town, but in a lesser location, is quite often cheaper than residential housing. Here is Genitalia's course of action. She found a fourplex of offices on a side street with weak visibility, yet only three blocks from the beach. It was 695 square feet, renting for $850 a month. Jenna prepaid an entire year in advance, which reduced the unit to $775 per month. Jenna Talia lived three blocks from the ocean for considerably less than half the price of the one-bedroom apartment two doors away. $878 a month versus $1,895 per month. Yo. Claiming he chipped the tooth while eating soup, it was cold in this 10 by 20 foot non-climate controlled storage unit. Although he had to clandestinely sleep there, Zebediah's penny-pinching old pal Ty Tass could easily afford long underwear and a sleeping bag as the rent was a mere $95 per month. Injun Joe say, he's so tight, when he squeeze quarter, booger come out, George Washington knows. For those with a more nomadic bent, such as Leo Tard, staying on site of festivals and events for free was a liberating way of life. Leo crashed at wine festivals, renaissance fairs, music festivals, sports and field tournaments, and county fairs, all for free. Most will skip the most expensive zip codes, so with this lack of competition, look for a house that is sectioned off a bit with two semi-separate wings. Ranch-style homes work best, but upstairs-downstairs wings can also work. You are living separately for the most part, yet share a kitchen. For example, one wing has two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and either a family room or a den. Each tribe gets their own living quarters, yet this allows them to afford to live on an estate in one of the top five zip codes in the United States. Zeb's friend, I'll be back, enjoys the wing with the ballroom so he can get a little jiggy. Living in half of the $4.6 million estate, for $2,900 a month. He achieved this by sharing the estate with a single mother whose share was $2,400 for Clee Taurus. Hospitals and hospice care facilities 
allow longer-term parking, plus have restrooms and cafeterias. The elderly and the infirm need assistance and companionship. So volunteering at senior centers, nursing homes, and hospice care facilities is an extraordinarily fulfilling activity. You can learn living history, fill your soul, and live park for free. These co-ops generally behest that work share be performed for the insulated from reality flock in exchange for room, board, and indoctrination. Zebri calls an occult fellow named Mick Stupp, who, as one of the guru hippies, seldom wore shoes, which led to calluses on his feet. He also ate very little, making him frail, and with his odd diet, developed bad breath. In other words, he was a super callous, fragile mystic hexed by halitosis. Injun Joe say, we take breather now. If interested in learning how the real world works, this 185 page Funk Butter book will help, as will the great variety of ways to attain free or cheap housing. Thanks for the warm welcome back to Helter Shelter. Okay, let's begin our second half journey. We're gonna finish strong, gang. That's right. Often located in secure church parking lots, most towns now have safe parking programs. These altruistic charities and nonprofits set aside parking spaces for those sleeping in their cars. Living on a boat avoids almost all regulatory fuckery and with no property taxes can equal cheap living. Between public docks, moorings, marinas, and yacht clubs, Zeb's amigo Eric Tile squeezed his 26-footer into a 24-foot slip, paying a mere $321 a month. This marina had laundry facilities, a pool, restrooms with showers, and restaurant discounts. Till Crow and her retaliatory animus was to rent out her compound to travelers. In addition to three bedrooms rented out, her huge backyard had two sheds, two tents, and a tree house. Val made $96,000 before getting shut down, then sold her compound and cashed out a small duplex just outside of Kona, Hawaii. His other gal pal, Mary Ott, played it a little closer to the vest. Due to its strong location, she rents out her pad in Santa Fe, New Mexico, allowing her to freely travel four months a year. Tent cities and slums are illustrations of a banana republic. Some think that Section 8 housing destroys pristine neighborhoods, but since Zeb abhors gentrification, he nonetheless rolled the dice. He wished he hadn't. Locking your house and car will not prevent theft or break-in in in many hoods, but you are creating resistance to theft. Most thieves will move on to a site that offers less resistance. Sure, we all have mental thresholds for danger, but these worthless sacks of human colonic detrius are not owed high respect simply for existing. Zebediah has a homie named Cody Pendant. I invest 90 to 120 minutes per presentation and stay in nice hotels 14 weeks a year. An hour and 10 minute presentation resulted in three nights at an Anaheim hotel, plus two free passes for Disneyland, and well over a dozen times I have acquired cash in lieu of prizes. Of course I'd never buy a timeshare because the same timeshare they are selling for $40,000 is for sale on eBay for $2,500. And some of the buyer's remorse suckers even try to give them away for free. Bad decision, sir. Bad decision. Generally speaking, land appreciates and dwellings depreciate. So offering to rent inexpensively or freely and to take care of their seldom used getaway home can be symbiotically rewarding. Additional house sitting was touched on earlier, 
So let's focus on house exchanging. The World Wide Web has opened up all kinds of opportunities for both domestic and international travel. Living elsewhere can be enriching. Look, the zoning laws have made affordable housing illegal. What the fuck are you supposed to do? Well, Dick Fitzentite didn't realize his grave mistake at this seldom visited cemetery until the police showed up. And although he wasn't in a public restroom, the writing was most definitely on the wall. A melodramatic elderly couple in their 80s were having a tough time making ends meet in everyday household chores, so they offered Dick room and board if he would do some household chores and light driving for them, as neither had a current license. He lived on their property in a shed with a loft and dialed in the interior. A heavy-duty extension cord plugged into the main house powered his microwave and mini refrigerator. Three-day surfing contests and sandcastle contests, plus festivals and religious retreats need eyeballs overseeing the night shift. However, Zeb prefers staying on construction sites in their office trailer because they pay more and it lasts for weeks or months at a time. Seasonally at pumpkin patches and Christmas tree lots are also fruitful. They only have porta potties, so for showers and laundry, Zeb paid his longtime buddy Clay Potter $22 for a replacement key to the yacht club where Clay is a member. Jim Joe say, always check toilet seat for deuce much. Oh, and here's a semi-funny vignette on why Zeb got fired at the three-day religious retreat at the lake. This was a rather devout group who rented out via permit the entire lake and surrounding vicinity where Zebedai ogled a gal floating on her back while saying a little too loudly, wow, a virgin sleeping on water. Kind of reminds me of a cherry float. Some are actually quite good at this, including Casey Dia from another episode. But you'd be hard pressed to find anyone of the caliber of Dennis Toffus. Dennis, a tough man, is attested by his refusal of any Novocaine for his root canal because he wanted to transcend dental medication. Financial reality is a harsh mistress. Believing that there is nothing wrong with making a stand against depression. It was as rudimentary as can be, but at least it was near a Walmart. With an odd begging sign reading, Contillion lessons needed for debutante ball, any amount helps, Ben could now eat and use Wally World's facilities. When harassed for the treehouse living, his plausible excuse to the cops was that he was an avid bird watcher. Oh, and Ben lived on $2.30 a day. Tent living. This was similar to his treehouse living, with the plausible excuse altered to being an amateur astrologer fascinated with stargazing. Ben has also lived in a lifeguard tower, a surf shop, attic crawl space, and a backyard teepee. He has lived under and in bridge crawl spaces and in golf course maintenance sheds as they are closed at night. Ben's favorite method was living in an 8x8 turret of a seafood restaurant, bartering security work for lodging. These parks now comprise 6.4% of the U.S. housing sector. Zeb's boyhood friend, Timmy Dial, tried mobile home living, but quickly tired of living amidst so many old folks. After remitting his 30-day notice, Timmy was chatting up a full-figured gal around the pool where he bet her a dollar that he can make her boobs move without touching them. The gal said, no way, and accepted the bet. Timmy then cupped his hands around her breasts, jiggling them all around. The gal irately said, hey, you touched my boobs. Timmy meekly replied, yeah, I owe you a dollar. You see, when you zig when others zag, inexpensive off-season rentals at beach and lake cottages become viable. Similarly, with warmer climates between mid-May to mid-October, 
inexpensive mountain lodging is also within reach. Oh, and don't forget, mothers-in-law die. Seek out that unit above the garage. Rentals are a game of supply and demand. Understanding that obviousness better than most, Zebediah Funkbutter, who lives in a top vacation destination, rents out his beach shack for $6,500 for the month of July and $5,500 for August. His rent is a mere $1,600. Those two vacated summer months are spent living on the road or traveling and staying and partying at youth hostels. In addition to this $8,800 annual profit, he rents out his driveway for 24-foot and smaller motorhomes. Oh, and turning the driveway into an annual $900 bill made him happier than a midget at a miniskirt convention. Being friends with Rick O'Shea has its privileges, as Zeb reveals Rick's hidey hole. He has six and a half acres zoned as a seasonal campground so that his property taxes are no more than $550 a year. He bought a used motorhome for $700, which had everything working perfectly except for a blown motor, and also built a pit toilet outhouse 20 yards downwind. Rick would also purify water from the stream located half a mile away. Add in the ability to bathe in the stream seven months a year, he lived ultra inexpensively. Side note. Buying a couple few cheap rural acres with no building code enforcement, but with good soil, decent rainfall, and low taxes is a solid plan. Then put an inexpensive travel trailer on it with solar panels for energy production. Or find one with an old barn and convert it into living quarters. Zeb's brother-in-arms, Justin Sider, feels ill at ease when not on the water. He is an expert sailor and all-around waterman with an unparalleled sense of adventure. His main deal, however, is cruise ship living, and it is all free. Being a superb dancer plus good-looking with impeccable manners and graciousness, the cruise lines want him cruising on their senior cruises. Justin digs it. Never spending a dime on food or drink or lodging, I feel like royalty. Oh! And Justin did get inside her as he was slipped many, many room keys. Adding up their advanced ages, he claims to have banged over 11,000 years worth. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.